Okay, everyone, thank you for coming today. Um, I wanted to inform you that earlier today we informed Manny Acta that he will not be returning as the manager of the Cleveland Indians for the 2013 season. Sandy Alomar uh, will serve as the interim manager for the remaining six games. Today is obviously an exceptionally difficult day uh, for the organization and for me personally. Manny is a tremendous person with great, ball, great baseball experience and an uh, unparalleled work ethic. Every day Manny was here, he worked tirelessly to make the organization better. Unfortunately, our results on the field fell short of our expectations. And we're disappointed that we were able, not able to win more consistently under Manny's leadership. But we believe a new approach at this point will give us the best chance to have success moving forward. A decision like this is never easy. Um, it's made all the more difficult because of how good a person Manny is and how hard he tried every day to make the organization successful. We certainly wish him and his family all the best moving forward. Today's decision really reflects on our disappointment in our major league performance this year, but more importantly, our determination to get better as an organization. Ultimately, the accountability rests with me, and I, along with the rest of our front office, will work tirelessly to improve our performance moving forward. In way of timing, I think it's important to know why we're doing it today. Uh, we arrived at a decision last night, a final decision last night, and we're facing a series of meetings here in the coming days of the season, uh, meetings with coaching staff and individual meetings with players, and we felt it was best uh, and most respectful to Manny to move forward at this point and uh, allow him to move on. So with that, I'll certainly open it up to any questions and happy to answer any you might have. Chris, you said the accountability rests with, with you. Um, you know, how much responsibility or, or culpability do you feel in, in the collapse this season? A lot. I think we all share in the responsibility of how things have turned out this year. Myself, the players, the coaches, and Manny. Um, and it's also my responsibility to make sure that we're better moving forward. And I think that's where we will spend our focus and, you know, it, We'll begin the manager search uh, immediately, probably starting tomorrow, and look to try to get a new leader in place that uh, hopefully can allow us to have more success moving forward. Chris, how much of a realistic shot does Sandy Alomar Jr. have of going beyond just a 16 audition or whatever? Sandy will be a legitimate candidate for the position. So I'm not quite sure. I mean, right now our focus has been on this decision, and we have not yet turned our full attention to the search process. But I expect that Sandy will be a, uh, a primary candidate. Chris, Chris you about a month ago, you said that Manny Acker was a, you felt was a part of the solution here, mm -hmm. not a part of the problem. What, what changed in, that, in the last month and a half or so? I think you know each, of, each day that uh, we spent this season, we were focused on trying to get better. We were focused on trying to win that night's game, and we were tr focused on trying to help our players be better uh, at the end of the season than they were then. You know, at some point, we have to shift our focus to the evaluative side and look back at what happened this year. And unfortunately, with the way things unfolded in the second half and how we played, um, you know, we felt we needed to make a change. Chris, how much did the Dolans have input-wise in this decision, and how much will they be involved, in, and how much will you communicate with them about the new manager? Well, decisions of this magnitude, they're always involved in. Um, there were a lot of discussions between Mark myself, uh, and Paul Dolan, and um, like I said, we reached that decision last night. Chris, when you talk about your accountability, you're the one that re signed the deal. You're the one that didn't make a big deal of the deadline. For lack of a better way to put it, how do you survive mm -hmm. in the name of the Well, again, that's probably a, a better question for someone else. What I can tell you is I'm accountable for those things. That, uh, you know, certainly many of the decisions we've made haven't worked out as well as we'd hoped. But uh, at the same time, I continue to believe in the talent that we have on this roster. And I'm hopeful moving forward that the, the group of guys that we have here uh, will perform better. And uh, unfortunately, that did not happen this year. Chris, there's a large segment of the fan base that feels like there's not a lot of hope for next year and beyond. Mm -hmm. How do you, as an organization, go about this offseason giving them some, some hope? Well, I think there is. I think if you look at our roster and the building blocks that we have, and you know, if you look at our up-the-middle talent with Carlos Santana and Ms. Drupal Cabrera, Jason Kipnis, Michael Brantley, uh, Lonnie Chisenhall at third base, uh, we have a young starting rotation. We have Carlos Carrasco coming back last year. Our entire bullpen's under control next year. So that's a pretty good foundation from which to build. Now, we need to do a better job of complementing that group. And, uh, you know, that's what we'll, you know, we'll spend time doing. 
So I understand that. I understand that frustration, and certainly with the way we've played in the second half. But uh, I think that there's a there's a lot more reason to be optimistic than might just be there on the surface. Chris Manny had said uh, three years when he took the job, that looking at the prospects and looking at Sizemore, Hafner, and, and mm -hmm. so on, that this basically wasn't this year was wasn't the team that maybe he was looking at three years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, where, did, where did that responsibility? Uh, there are a lot of things that have transpired in those in that time. Less obviously, injuries have certainly impacted some of those players that you've mentioned, and um, there are certainly other players that didn't perform as well as we'd hoped. But um, we all had higher expectations for this team coming into the season, and just for whatever reason, especially in the second half, we were contending with this roster for you know four months. Uh, unfortunately, the last two months went um, far worse than any of us could have expected. Looking back, was a flawed roster coming out of spring training. Well, I don't think there's ever a perfect roster coming out of spring training, but um, it, it doesn't seem like it was as talented as maybe we thought, and certainly not didn't end up being as healthy as we thought either. Chris, being here, go ahead. Thanks. Uh, what kind of feedback did you get from the players over the last couple of weeks? I'm sure you, you know, tried to get their opinions on what you think, what they thought went wrong, and, and how many uh, really, Tom, in our process, you know, I, I don't solicit player opinions to, to make these decisions. Now, it's important for me to have an understanding of the clubhouse dynamic and, and how players are playing and responding, but I didn't go out and solicit. Uh, did you feel like they were playing hard for Manny, though? I did. I felt, I mean, if you watched, as, we, as I've watched us play over the course of the last few weeks, I've never at any point felt it's for a lack of effort. It's not for a lack of effort during the game, nor a lack of effort in pregame. Our coaches and Manny... Um, did everything they could, you know, to try to get this group of players to perform better, and um, you know, in the end, it just didn't work as we we hoped. Had him in eighty-six interviews. As you would expect, he is a complete professional. Um, I hope, you know, at some point when I face those moments of adversity like Manny did, that I can handle him with as much dignity and professionalism as he did, because he was. Uh, he was exceptionally gracious of the opportunity and appreciative of uh, the experiences with the organization, and um, uh, I was appreciative. I was appreciative in how he handled it. Chris, you touched on this earlier, but would, you, would it be fair to call Sandy the front runner here? I mean, considering you know, what uh, Sandy Alomar means to this organization and how well he knows his players. Play. Sandy brings a lot to the table. Uh, he's obviously been a managerial candidate in other places before here, and I'm confident that he will be a primary candidate. How, where he will fit among the alternatives, I I don't think it's fair for me to speculate at this point. Again. Our entire focus at this point has been making this decision, and now we'll turn our attention to the to the search process. Chris, when you make a decision like this, does uh, any of the other candidates does that factor into your your mind when you're, you're kind of playing with that? And I think that decision? our decision is made. You know, this decision was trying to make. We were trying to make the right decision for the organization and determine whether or not we were best served by having a different voice, and we ultimately reached that uh, that conclusion. Chris, do you have any sort of uh, list? Of uh, yes, we'll have a list that we'll begin working through that process now. I mean, you already have some sort of list now. We have not been actively working on that list to date, no. How about a timetable, Chris, as far as when you want to have that settled? There certain there's, no, there's no deadline to it. Our preference would be to do it as quickly as possible, but that will be dependent upon you know, some factors that are outside of our control and different people's availability. Chris, uh, Sandy's uh, lack of experience managing, if he is you know, the full-time guy, does that concern you at all? I think respectfully, Paul, I think today I'd pr prefer to keep it focused on the decision today, and there will be another day where we can talk about the, the search process at this point. Chris, you've watched Mark stand at that podium doing exactly what you're doing today for you to be the general manager and have to go through teams kind of take me through that. It's a tough day. I mean, I not only have a great deal of professional respect for Manny, and but I care deeply about him as a person. And, um, you know, to have to deliver that type of news is... It's never fun, especially when you know I know I'm also responsible, and this you know the, this burden doesn't fall solely on Manny. So um, it's a tough day, but it's a day where you know we'll move forward from, and you know hopefully for us we can find a leader uh, for the clubhouse that um, you know will give us an opportunity to be successful moving forward. For some fans who want to just automatically jump ship, you know, and have so in the last mm -hmm. couple months, attendance-wise, and everything, what, what is the message now to them? based on today and based on moving forward? Well, we've made this decision with the goal and expectation of being better moving forward. And that's what our focus is. We are determined to do that. And you know, that will be 
you know, how we're operating from today on is with that, with that intent. How can we be better moving forward? How can we earn their support back? And we understand we have to earn it. Chris, are there any <coughs> restrictions as a time frame of during the playoffs that you can or can't make any announcements? There are certain restrictions with respect to when we can announce uh, personnel moves, but we'll work in concert with Major League Baseball to make sure we comply. Do you think, um, you think he lost the clubhouse, lost the club? As I said earlier, Paul, I think our guys continue to play hard. They, you know, we we played hard. I mean, this last series in Chicago, we played hard on the road trip. We played hard in the last home stand. So I have not seen any. I have not seen any evidence of that. So no players came to you, a la Boston. No players came to you and, and uh, uh, protest. I won't, that that did not happen. No, no. Chris, a couple of, of rumors were they're bouncing around today and in the last week or so about Terry Frank coming up. Comment even on that name, and, and if that might be somewhat of interest. Um, again, we have not really gotten to the point of going through that search process. I mean, I can tell you, we've had, you know, Terry worked here. We have a relationship, and it's a guy that you know I certainly keep in touch with. But beyond that, you know, I, I'm not prepared really to, to talk about it again. I'll, there will be another day where we can talk more extensively about the search process once we really turn our attention so to you that. Haven't talked to him yet. I mean, I've talked to Terry periodically since he's, you know not been the manager in Boston, but that's been the but extent of our conversations. So. Chris, is there a certain uh, managerial style that you'd be looking for now that you've had Manny here? Is it something that's similar? Um, a lot of the same players, the younger players, I know when Manny came here, it was about um, mm -hmm. trying to bring those young players along. Is there certain, is there certain characteristics you'll be looking for in the new manager? Well, to get the most of the team. I think that's ultimately what we're looking for, is to try to get the most out of the group of players um, you know, that we have that we have here and how we can complement that group to share um, different perspectives on the best way to do that. You so in terms of specific attributes, and again, that's probably more along the lines of the search process, and I, I prefer to defer some of those comments to, you know, to another day. What about the rest of the, the staff? I mean, obviously, they stay indicating over. Mm -hmm. You got six days to go. With right, the staff will remain intact. You know, moving forward, uh, Mike Sarbaugh will assist um, Sandy as the bench coach, but the other staff members will remain in place. Chris, you talk about having the core, but you need other players to complement that core. Mm -hmm. Is that players you already have and need them to step up? Is it going out to get a lot more guys? What does that mean? It's a combination. For us to be the team we need to be and we want to be and aspire to be, we need the guys that are here to play better than, for the most part, than they've played this year. That's going to be a big part of it. So. Um, you know, that's where it needs to start, and then we need to fill in around that group. Chris, the timing of this, uh, why did you decide to go with six games left? I, I think just, just because we won, we, we reached a decision last night, especially as we started to look forward. We knew that we had staff meetings to meet with the Major League coaching staff, and we had individual player meetings, and I felt that this was the most respectful time to do it and not ask Manny to sit through. Uh, and participate in those meetings if we didn't feel like he was going to be. Because those meetings are forward-looking. They're talking about the off-season and next year. And if we reached a decision that Manny wasn't going to be part of that, we felt it was best to you know, let him move on at that point. Chris, you mentioned you made the decision last night. Was there a certain time where that started to kind of creep into your mind that that might have to be a possibility of letting Manny go? I, I, our preference all along, as I, as I said earlier this year, was not to make a change. And I always remained hopeful that w our play would improve and we would turn things around in the second half. You know, unfortunately, as the days dwindled, that didn't happen. So at some point, our attention started to shift from, okay, the day to day to evaluating and assessing the season. And once we did that over the you know, last several days and started to assess that and have some dialogue internally, um, we arrived at that decision. Chris, the fact that the Indians have played the last three games so tough that they make the decision harder? Uh, it, I don't think we didn't look at any one or two particular games. I think we, we tried to evaluate the season in its entirety, in, um, including how we've played for the, for the balance of the second half. Chris, your meeting last night was you and Paul. Uh, there, were numer there were a number of meetings, but it was Mark, Paul, and me, yes. Well, I mean, that's the only people. Yes. I mean, at that there were other meetings involved and other people that had opinions, but yes, yes. Did, when you went on the trip to uh, Texas, uh, did you go partly to see how the team was reacting to Manny or how Manny was reacting? Uh, no, I think, as you guys know, I travel with the team periodically. I try to make a couple of trips 
uh, throughout the course of the season, a trip early in the season, a trip in, in the middle of the season, and a trip at the end of the season. So that was a, a trip I had targeted on my calendar for a while. So uh, it wasn't anything atypical. It was a scheduled visit. Do you think from the time you hired Manny to, to today, did he change as a manager, or what, what do you think? Uh, what happened? No, I think Manny does. I, I think as you know, as we look back on the process, I still think Manny has a lot of attributes to be a very successful major league manager. And I'm confident that when he gets that opportunity again in a different set of circumstances, uh, he'll do just that. <coughs> Unfortunately, just with our, uh, with how things came together this year with our group, it, it just didn't happen. And uh, he's got a ton to offer any organization with what he brings to the table. Man, what you, uh, Chris, what do you say to people that, that say, there's a deeper problem, and the Manny Act is just being used as a, as a scapegoat. Mm -hmm. I think that's a that's a fair question. I understand that perspective, but uh, and as I said, Manny's not the only one to blame. And I think we need to uh, really look hard organizationally to figure out how we can continue to be better, be especially at the major league level, because our performance was not what we had expected, not what we'd hoped. And we all have higher expectations, and we need to, you know, to do a better job of identifying some of those solutions and how we move forward. And you know, we, we started that process, and we'll take the next few weeks to make sure that we execute on it. Chris, have you gone far enough in this process to actually identify things that people did wrong, or the process was wrong, or incomplete? Or not. Take on this, and you know, now we think we know why. Or mm -hmm. On some of those things, we have, Sheldon. On others, we're still in the process of doing that. So um, you know, obviously for you know, injuries or things like that, we can assess things that didn't happen. But um, So yes, there are some things I think we've identified and others that we're still working through understanding better. Chris, after going through this process with Manny, what did, what did you learn in that process that will help you in your search now? Um, from a process standpoint or from the managerial search that it's exhausting, that it takes a lot of time and effort and it's a lot of phone calls and to really try to understand um, and, and get, a, a, you know, get enough perspectives on individuals from a variety of areas uh, to really have an informed opinion on someone. So. Chris, when was Manny informed this morning? Uh, this afternoon, uh, early this afternoon. I met him here. What about players? Were the players notified at all? Or? I did reach out to a handful of players before it, we announced it publicly, yes. Typical response you expect from them? Uh, I mean, in, in many respects, and I'm not going to divulge the specifics of all of those conversations or individual ones, I, I would say the general theme is you know, they express you know, some accountability in it too and disappointment that, um, you know, that their play may have contributed to this decision. Thanks for coming down on short notice, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Yep. Thanks for